Margaret had good reason for leaving the washing. Her husband, Ray, a trawler skipper, had left for Icelandic fishing grounds several hours previously. The trawlerman's wife would not touch any laundry that day, lest she wash her man away. Her domestic pride was outstripped by her superstition. She sent me running after For the ship I left the umber Now she's spreading for his safety And she listens for the weather She'll send me down a message She'll send the secret way And today she'll do the washing There she'll wash a man away She said Fish House gossip kept workers' minds off the bitter cold. It also provided respite and sometimes laughter amid a relentless freezing grind. There was no laughter today. The other girls at our table spoke of little all day other than the missing ships. To the girls at the table, Lily was subdued, not herself. No time was wasted when the horn signalled the shift's end. It was Lily's last at Wilkinson Brothers. I am a fish house woman My husband works away He's a pecky on the trolleys And I work a night or day And I fish on the canny Some say just like my tongue My mother was a skinner Till the free John Barry Rogers was a decky learner who, with sole survivor Harry Edom and bosun Walter Hewitt, managed to get to a life raft in the dying seconds of the Ross Cleveland in atrocious Icelandic weather. Come to me, come to me Round here all the smart men go trawling it's a life that these families all know In the nights that my poor mother calling Please don't go, please don't go Men are all down the ages were called by the sea Come to me At the Isaacfield Hospital a wheelchair-bound Harry Edom had a telephone brought to his bedside. At his parents' home in Askew Avenue, Harry's younger brother Michael answered. The operator said, we have a call for you, putting it through now. Michael braced himself. He could barely recognise Harry's feeble tones. Mam, Dad, our Harry, he's alive. The parents stared at each other, it was true what the two young reporters who had fled from the door minutes earlier were trying to tell Minnie was true. Harry had survived. Two days of dodging frozen ways And each one would have sunk her But wind and gale that won the day He cried, I'm going over Give our love to our families From this we can't recover When you go fishing from the sea Beware the sea does not catch thee After an appearance on the Eamon Andrews show Lily accidentally showed up her community. The host asked her what the fishermen do on leave. To studio audience laughter, she replied, the married ones take their wives out to the pub and the single ones go with their tarts. There was an audible intake of breath. In Hazel Road, the word tart simply means girlfriend. Elsewhere, it had a more better known meaning. In the days to follow, Lily was removed from the group she had founded. The men she fought for turned against her. After the ban on fishing in bad weather, 
led to Icelanders landing fish in Hull, while Hull men walked the docks unemployed. The Yorkshire night was freezing, the ice beneath her feet, as a lily waited quietly in the cold. Her head scarf wrapped around her, her blue coat buttoned neatly, Lily cast her shadow long on Hazel Road. Her final years were not happy. To the outside world, she kept up a cheerful facade. She was still happy-go-lucky Big Lil, a regular at the cry in Rainers. She suffered ill health but kept it secret. She had never really got over her treatment by the media and despite her brave front, never shook off the feeling that those comrades closest to her had abandoned her and that her courageous fight had been overlooked. She lived in obscurity for the remainder of her days. Lillian Balaka died of peritoneal cancer aged just 59 in 1988. Her daughter Virginia flew from New Zealand to be at her side. Lily's last request for Virginia was to go to the Hull Market and buy a dozen silk handkerchiefs. Next day, Lily died. Hours before her death, Lily had handed out the handkerchiefs to all who had looked after her. The doctors, the tea ladies, the cleaners. She bought twelve silk handkerchiefs, one for each month of the year. For the twelve holy fishermen, keeping her loved ones from fear. For the wives and the mothers of justice who stood at her arm. Ironically, Lily outlived the industry she fought so hard to improve. Her funeral was attended by a tiny fraction of the hundreds she once swayed with her powerful oratory. She is buried beside her beloved Carmelo. Ray silhouetted Decky in the Umbra, drops his gear in a subway car to catch the company store. And Cathedral wireless crackling mimics bacon sizzle soundtracks departures in morning's half lights. Dogger, Fisher, German bait. And for all of the men and the boys who are called by the sea, she bought twelve silk handkerchiefs to bring them home safely to thee. She bought twelve silk handkerchiefs to bring them home safely to me.